Last week, a few people celebrated Passover. Should I say celebrated? They kept the feast of Passover. This week as well, a few people did likewise. They kept the feast of Passover. Different dates as usual. Um, so we decided to comment on the Passover feast. It's usually tied to the Exodus. And I am asking who added Passover to the Exodus? Am I implying that it was originally not part of it? Exactly. Um, if it was not originally part of it, then where did it come from? Why was it added? Can we demonstrate that in the text historically? And that is what we would do today in our session. Again, we know the theological explanations on the topic. We are not taking theological positions today. We are removing our dogmas and our biases, and then we're looking at the text critically, historically. So we're doing what we've been doing for a while now, critical academic scholarship. That means that no dogma, no biases. That means that we would need to forget what we already know about the Exodus and then the Passover Moed, the festival or feast, however you want to set time, however you want to translate it. Yeah. So that is the foundation that we are going to build on. We're going to be critical with the text. We're going to read it. We're going to demand that the text makes sense. We have, we're going to find out who is talking, where they're talking, where they're standing, all of that stuff, like we've done in the past. And we will pull it all apart and then put it together. Okay. Any questions with my very brief intro before we begin? Okay, I am hoping that everybody can hear me clearly. I'm hoping that you can unmute and contribute. With that said, let's hit the ground running. So we're going to start by investigating the story itself. We're going to start our investigations by focusing on the critical part of the story. Right after the second to last disaster struck which is the period of intense darkness. Now, according to the narrative, despite all the terrible plagues that have happened, Pharaoh still refuses to free the Hebrew people. Now, let me say this from the get-go. We know that Israel was not in Egypt. We've already dealt with that. We know that there was not a mass exodus as the biblical text portrays. We've already dealt with that. We know that this mass exodus that um, theologically or traditionally has been accepted is a narrative that is coming from the southern kingdom of Judah. It is not a tradition coming from the northern kingdom of Israel. We've established that already. So, when we come to the biblical text, the narrative, the critical part of the narrative, I want us to pay very close attention to what we are being told, where the characters of the narrative are standing, when they leave, when they return, all of that stuff. You would gloss over this if you are coming from a theological perspective. It doesn't matter. We're just reading. We know the story. We're just reading what is in our head, not what is on the page. Now we want to read what is on the page. In our case, what is on the screen. So let's start from Exodus 10, 24. Pharaoh summoned Moshe and said, Go worship Yudhe Vavhe. But your flocks and your cattle shall be left. Your young children may also go with you. 
But Moshe said, You too shall give sacrifices and burnt offerings into our hands, and we will make them for you, Hevav He, our God. And also our cattle will go with us. Not a single hoof will remain, for we will take from it to worship Yudhevav He, our God. And we do not know how much we will worship Yudhevav He until we arrive there. Yudhevav He strengthened Pharaoh's heart, and he was unwilling to let them out. Now let's pay attention here. Pharaoh said to him, Go away from me. Beware. You shall no longer see my face. For on the day that you see my face, you shall die. Thereupon, Moshe said, You have spoken correctly. I shall no longer see your face. Quite straightforward. Exodus 11. Yudhivave said to Moshe, I will bring one more plague upon Pharaoh and upon Egypt. Afterwards, he will let you go from here. When he lets you go, he will completely drive you out of here. Please speak into the ears of the people and let them borrow each man from his friend and each woman from from her friend, silver vessels and gold vessels, so that Yudhevavhe Yudhevavhe gave the people favor in the Egyptians' eyes. Also, the man Moshe was highly esteemed in the land of Egypt, in the eyes of Pharaoh's servants and in the eyes of the people. Moshe said, so said Yudhevavhe. At the dividing point of the night, I will go out into the midst of Egypt, and every firstborn in the land of Egypt will die, from the firstborn of Pharaoh who sits on his throne to the firstborn of the slave woman who is behind the millstones and every firstborn animal. And there will be a great cry throughout the entire land of Egypt, such as there never has been, and such as they shall never be again. So, we know the story. But let me read it. But to all the children of Israel, not one dog will wet its tongue against either man or beast, in order that you shall know that Yudhevav He will spare, no, will separate between the Egyptians and between Israel. And all these servants of yours will come down to me and prostrate themselves to me, saying, Go out, you and all the people who are at your feet, and afterwards I will go out. Then he, Moshe, Moshe exited from Pharaoh with burning anger. The Lord said to Moshe, Yudhivave said to Moshe, Pharaoh will not heed you in order to increase my miracles in the land of Egypt. Moshe and Aaron had performed all these miracles before Pharaoh, but Yudhevave strengthened Pharaoh's heart and he did not let the children of Israel out of his land. We know the story. We know it very well. Now, when we take a closer look at the text, we find a complex story that we need to ask how to understand it. It's complex. You wouldn't notice it, if we uh, we had our theological lenses on. But we're not doing that today. We are being critical. Look at verses 28. Pharaoh said to him, Pharaoh is saying, saying to Moshe, Go away from me, beware, you shall no longer see my face. For on the day that you see my face, you shall die. Thereupon, Moshe said, you have spoken correctly. I shall no longer see your face. So here, Moshe says 
he won't see Pharaoh again. Is that accurate? Pharaoh says, I don't want to see your face. The next time I see your face, you shall die. Moshe says, yes, I shall no longer see your face again. Okay. Where is Moshe standing when he makes this statement? And what do you think happens after he makes the statement? Logically. He should be standing in front of Pharaoh, right? And like in the court. Correct. He is. And after he makes the statement, logically, what do you think would happen? I think he would leave. Um, he would leave. He would leave. Correct. Okay. So let's put that in our spirit. We are expecting him to leave because both agree that they're not going to see each other again. And that is confirmed by what we read next here. yud Ave said to Moshe, so logically he's left. He's left Pharaoh. I will bring one more plague upon Pharaoh and upon Egypt. Afterwards, he will let you go from here. When he lets you out, he will completely drive you out of here. This is not being said whilst Moshe is in front of Pharaoh. This is being said whilst Moshe has left. Proof. Please speak into the ears of the people and let them borrow each man from his friend and each woman from her friend. Silver vessels and gold vessels. So yud he gave the people favor in the Egyptians' eyes. This is not happening in front of Pharaoh. He's left. He's gone to wherever, he's a Goshen, wherever the Hebrews are. And yud he speaks to him and he's telling the people. He's speaking into their ears. He's not doing this in front of Pharaoh. Verses 3. So yud he gave the people favor in the eyes of the Egyptians. Also, the man Moshe was highly esteemed in the land of Egypt in the eyes of Pharaoh's servants and in the eyes of the people. Blah, blah, blah. Awesome. So, where is Pharaoh here? Sorry, where is Moshe here? As we've all agreed, Moshe is not in front of Pharaoh. They both agree they are not going to see face to face again. Look at Verses 8. Let's go back. Exodus 10, 28 and 29. They agree they are not going to see face to face again. You come to Exodus 11 and Moshe is not in Pharaoh's presence. He's in wherever Israel is. Baby Goshen. And he's telling them this instruction from You'd have have hey. We get to Exodus 11 verses 8 and we are told that then he, Moshe, exited from Pharaoh with burning anger. Oh, so we got a double story. We got an insert, <laughs> huh? <laughs> well... We may have. I mean, you can't just uh, all of a sudden you just leave and with anger and and because that makes sense when they talk to each other like that. It's like, okay, you ain't gonna see my okay, you right, I ain't gonna see your face and and leave, storm off in anger, like peace out of here. Oh, okay. Beautiful. So we have a bit of a contradiction here. Because when we take a closer look at the text, um, the story is getting a bit complex. Moshe says he won't see Pharaoh's face again, but then he goes out into Egypt to see Pharaoh again, creating a bit of a contradiction. Well, he actually teleports back to the scene. That's correct. <laughs> he just appears back 
in the scene leaving you know like it was uh like you know if you're watching a show and it fade back to the or cut out from family guy or something that's what just, it just happened correct so now we are investigating and we are we are finding out wait a second there is a bit of a bump in the narrative. The narrative doesn't flow because the last time we checked, he had left. We're not going to see each other again. He goes and he informs the people what Yudhe Vave says. And then we see an exit. You cannot exit if you're not in front of Haro again. So we need to understand what is going on here. Okay. So I hope everybody is following. So as we follow the flow of the text, we notice a bit of a bump in the story caused by new verses added after the confrontation between Moshe and Pharaoh. As Mr. Vito correctly pointed out, there's an insert. Initially, the story moved smoothly from one set of verses to the next until the interruption of the added section in chapters 11. Let me show you here. We have Exodus 10 and then we have Exodus 11. Just going to read what is in yellow and blue. Yudhevave strengthened Pharaoh's heart, and he was unwilling to let them out. Okay. Pharaoh said to him, Go away from me. Beware. You shall no longer see my face, for on the day that you see my face, you shall die. Thereupon, Moshe said, You have spoken correctly. I shall no longer see your face. Moshe said, so said you'd have have hey. So when Pharaoh says, I shall no longer see your face, Moshe says, sure, I shall no longer see your face. And Moshe is going to tell him what is going to happen. The last plague, because he's really not going to see his face again. Okay, so follow. I'll start from 28 again with his background. Pharaoh said to him, go away from me. Beware, you shall no longer see my face. For on the day that you see my face, you shall die. Thereupon, Moshe said, you have spoken correctly. I shall no longer see your face. Moshe said, so said you'd have have hey. At the divided point of the night, I will go out into the midst of Egypt. And every firstborn in the land of Egypt will die. From the firstborn of Pharaoh, who sits on his throne, to the firstborn of the slave woman who is behind the millstones and every firstborn animal. And there will be a great cry throughout the entire land of Egypt, such as there never has been and such as there shall never be again. But to all the children of Israel, not one dog will wet its tongue against either man or beast. In order that you shall know that you'd have have hey, will separate between the Egyptians and between Israel. And all these events of yours, sorry, all these servants of yours will come down to me and prostrate themselves to me saying, go out, you and all the people who are at your feet. And afterwards, I will go out. Then he, Moshe, exited from Pharaoh with burning anger. Original text, original narrative. You see how it flows. Moshe doesn't come back in front of Pharaoh in the original narrative. When Pharaoh says, I will not see your face again, Moshe acknowledges it. And then Moshe tells him the last plague. And he says, when this happens, you guys will chase us out. That is why I said, initially, the story moved smoothly from one set of verses to the next until the interruption occurs because a section is added. 
Exodus chapters 11 verses 1 to 3 is added later. If we remove those verses, as we've done, eliminate them, we find ourselves in the same final confrontation, where Moshe emerges defiant in verses um, Exodus chapters 11 verses 8. So the ancient narrative unfolds from Exodus chapters 10 verses 28 to 29. And then it moves from Exodus chapters 11, verses 4 to 8. Okay. So we have an addition, and that addition now brings a contradiction because Moshe has to leave the presence of Pharaoh, but then we find him there again. What is he doing there if both of them have agreed that we're not going to see each other again? So this is how the text should read. The ancient narrative, it unfolds from Exodus chapters 10, 28 to 29, and then Exodus 11, 4 to 8. Madam Alita. Now, in verse 28 uh, of, oh, I guess this is chapter 10, it sounds like a, a, a throwdown threat, just like we would do today. When I see you again, I'm going to kill you. Correct. So it doesn't seem, you know, this is a, when you threaten my life, when you tell me, uh, uh, Lita, what, let me see your face again. I'm going to do some, uh, I'm going to do some reckless to you. So it is that this is how these two were talking to each other. This is some harsh conversation here. Yes. You wouldn't just show back up randomly <laughs> because this guy has threatened your life. Correct. And this is why it sounds crazy, but of course we read over that for years. I've read this piece a million times and didn't didn't think about it in that you know in, in that way. But once somebody says, "Get out of my face," don't show back up again because if you do, I got some for you. There is where it's over. It's over right there. You gonna get these hands? You'll catch these hands. <laughs> That's True. exactly what um, meant. So this is our first um, issue, our first bump in reading the text, which would have to cause us to pause and say, okay, what is going on here? How do we resolve this? Because clearly the ancient narrative unfolds in Exodus chapters 10, 28 to 29, and then it continues Exodus 11, 4 to 8. So why was Exodus chapters 11 verses 1 to 3, what we had to eliminate for the story to make sense, why was it added later? <laughs> 